Digidestins, this is Kyle D, better known as Ride My Avatar, and today we're going to be going over Japanese Tuesday, so that means we get to pick through the winning decks of this this format so far and get to look at them in a little more deeper. We got three decks to pick from and we got a lot to talk about, so without further ado, let's dive into the video and talk about it. So first off, let's get into the total deck breakdown. We have 110 decks of data so far for EX4 meta. So if we really wanted to, we could use a lot of the BT12 data, bring it forwards, but we'll save that for the end because I think combining them at the end really puts in more perspective of what was topping, what was winning by the end of it. And it's just a lot of useful information. But here we can see from the start of what's going in the lead right now. Red, black Raymon is trailing at 21 while Bielzaman is trailing it right behind it at 14. Hunters is holding at 13. Blue Flare is holding strong at 13 yet again. And it just proves that it all it just needed was support that didn't just restrict it to your opponent needing two Digimon on board. Having free value like this that isn't restricted like that, really good in my opinion. So just sets you up pretty nicely. Ultra S Joggers at 8. Red Hybrid at 8. Bloom Hydra Quartz at 8. Gallantmon at 3. Crossheart at 3. Machine Dramon at 3. Dark Knightmon at 2. Then Jessmon on two, Imperial Dramon finally appearing in the format, and that is at two. This is the blue green version. Then you have Grandis at one, Rust Tyranno at one, D Brigade at one, Shine Greymon at one, Mirage Gaomon at one, or Gao Gamon. So Ravenmon for one, Shukakumon for one, I I guess Dramon at one, Grey Knightsmon at one, and then Examon at one. So this brings you up to 110 decks. We can take a nice look at the pie chart right now. Red, black, Raymon Tribal is sitting at 19.1% of the meta, holding strong. Uh, Beelzebub is trailing pretty quickly, though, and I think that's no surprise there. The deck is really consistent and able to kill you in ways your opponent is just not ready for. Hunter's at basically almost 12, tying in with Blue Flare. Alter S Joggers at 7% with Red Hybrid at 7%, while Bloom Hydro Quartz at 7% as well. So, good to see how this is trailing out, in my opinion. But we'll have to see if this continues next week when we get into more data that way. Next, let's get into it. So, the first deck we're going to really talk about, well, the information I get this from is this website here. This website here is DigimonCGGuides.com. has the winning deck profiles for everything from Twitter, gathers it all up in one nice neat little bow so guys that link will be down in the description definitely check it out definitely support them if you can so first deck we're going to talk about is none other than ravenmon yes it topped at 12 30 yes a little later than expected but this tamer battle was held with five people winner is with ravenmon merry christmas yeah not bad let's see what they kind of were playing and maybe give you guys some ideas on how to build your Ravenmon deck when the time comes. So, Ravenmon, or Ravenmon as I'll, I'll say it, but it's Ravenmon. This card is basically very powerful. At the end of attack, by deleting this Digimon that had a Digi-Evolution card with Bird, Avian, in one of its traits, play one Ravenmon from your trash at the end of your opponent's next turn without paying its memory cost. Basically... If your opponent is just going to kill it the following turn, you can just blow them up and then just have them reappear later. This is really good for any skills that you know your opponent's going to try to blow up your Digimon. And it just saves resources and what your opponent's trying to do. On deletion, if your opponent has eight or more cards in their hand, your opponent trashes one card in their hand. Then if you have se if they have seven or less cards in their hand, your opponent adds the top card to the security stack to hand. So... I think adding the cards to hand really go goes well, but it also spices in Shine Greymon Ruin Mode. When Digivolving on Deletion, all your opponent's Digimon get minus 5,000 DP until the end of your opponent's turn. And if attack, delete this Digimon, delete one of your opponent's Digimon, recovery one, and then if you have a Tamer in play, hatch one Digi Egg card in an empty space in the breeding area. So basically, an analog youth on a body for that hatching a Digi Egg, well, that's pretty good there. I mean, analog youth is always going to be useful in this deck because you want to mill out the stuff just to get your cards ready and then you have kenya basically to set you up because when one of your purple digimon with rave mon in its name 
or with bird or avian in one of its traits is deleted by spending this tamer draw a card then if that digimon is deleted by an effect gain one memory so we're going to be gaining a memory for popping our digimon i think this really does need a second wave of support but it's in the right direction in my opinion i can't wait to see what its burst mode is but you know using like celestial blaze really does put a hand number on your opponent's ability to deal with certain objectives in my opinion so this card by deleting one of your digimon in play delete one of your opponent's digimon with level less than or equal to the deleted level if the, you deleted digimon ravemon in its name you have in play by play one raymon from your trash at the end of your opponent's next turn without paying its memory cost sadly they don't combo in and you can't get like two ravemons going and just boom 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 nope sadly that's just not how that's gonna work then you have like Pekmon to be able to play your Kenya, Kenyan, Kion, Kion, bleh. Um, in play, you may play one card from your hand without paying its memory cost. Sets you up. Memory setter is really good. You know, we also have Chromon that if you have a purple tamer in play, you may digivolve this Digimon into Ravemon in your hand, paying its digivolution cost. And then they all have this on deletion, trash it opponents, delete one of your opponents level five. Or lower for its on deletion for this one but this one has trash one card from your opponent's hand so does this falcomon here but it's gonna take another round of support for this deck to really shine probably as bright as they want it to so not bad i think the deck has a lot of potential right now but it's gonna need that second round of support then we're gonna look at the rust tyranno deck that topped this was asked and requested on the last video so i was able to take a look at it but they faced against Crossheart, Greymon. It's the first time I've won with Gigimon. So, Gigimon, Rust Tyranno. Let's see what they were kind of working with, shall we? So, they have the new Tenemon from BT11. So, when you play a Green Tamer, draw a card. Which can get really interesting because you can turbo with Angoromon. Which, Angoromon got new support. But, when you play a Green Digi Tamer, draw a card. And then when your opponent's Digimon becomes spend and draw a card. This card, just combo with this, is a plus two anytime you play a Tamer, which is really good. Then they do run the Terriermon package. The reason for this, I mean, this one's really good just to make it so your Tamers are cheaper. But, you know, combo in with a Rapid Bond, you get to apply pressure to your opponent, controlling the board state. What's really awesome to see is Floramon in this deck. Not a lot of decks actually play the Ghost Game stuff. So, really good to see Floramon in it. On play, if you have a green tamer in play, one of your opponent's Digimon can't unsuspend until the end of your opponent's next turn. Okay. I mean, locking down one of your opponent's Digimon for three costs is really solid in some circumstances. Woodmon is just Woodmon for blocker. Ninjamon is when you play a tamer, suspend one of your opponent's Digimon. Not bad. And then you have Tyranomon for on play. When Digivolving, you may play one red one tamer card with a play cost three or less from your hand without paying its memory cost not a bad card there i think tyranomon's really solid and while you have a tamer in play this is you gets plus 2000 dp so sets up your taiga and your izzy's with this tyranomon here then we have Panjamon. so when did you only may play a blue or green tamer card with a play cost four or less from your hand without paying its memory cost what your goal is to set up all your tamers for free in trade-offs which Again, being able to digivolve and then play a tamer on top of that sometimes is just enough turbo speed for you to really get ahead against your opponent. And then your turn when you play another Digimon by an effect, one of your Digimon gains rush. So you combo Panjamon with Gigimon here. So when did you want to reveal the top three cards of your deck? You may play one tamer card among them without paying its memory cost. Place the rain cards at the top or bottom of your deck in any order. Really solid there, being able to manipulate the deck how you need to. But when attacking for each green or black tamer you have in play, reveal the top card of your deck. You may play any number of green or black Digimon among them with a total play cost 10 or less without paying its memory cost. Place the remaining cards at the bottom of the deck in any order. Wow, that really helps out because now with Panjamon, you get to make it have rush. That can lead to being locking down your opponent, getting a metal Tyranomon to lock down your opponent. And that just about really adds up. I mean, Rust Tyranomon alone is nasty as a Digimon because all turns when this Digimon deletes an opponent by battle, unsuspend it. It's got blocker. Boom, boom, boom. All set. I mean, and this thing comes in cheaper for every tamer you have in play. Green or black, by the way. But, and then having Quartzmon to lock down your opponent's deck 
really can lead to being some nice victories there. But Taiga, Taiga just basically reduces your level 5s. When a green Digimon would Digivolve into a level 5, you may suspend this Tamer to reduce the Digivolution cost by 1, and then all turns plus 1,000 DP. Is he a Mimi to help cheat in your opponent's... Well, cheat into your Megas very easily, but also... The gain to memory if they just have one suspended Digimon is really good. And then you have Izzy. When one of your opponent's Digimon becomes suspended, you may suspend this Tamer, gain one memory, extend your plays, does some crazy shenanigans there. But all in all, the deck has potential. Would I say this is going to be end-all, be-all? Maybe not. There's still more work to be done with this deck, and I feel like there's so much potential with it. And then finally, for those Galgamon players, we have mirage galgamon ready for you and then you have mega gargomon bellastar crossheart so let's see what he brought to the table here so he's playing four wanyamons because you're a tamer centric deck you'll get the draws off of it demi vmon for when the cg bomb comes unspended during your main phase it gets plus 1000 dp and the fifth egg that's all it's really in there for what scares me is they are playing ex4 galmon because on play, both players draw a card from their deck. But when effect adds a card to your opponent's hand, gain one memory is not bad on your turn. I just wish it was all turns. That would be really nice as a control stat. This one's just going to search you pieces. But this one also gets to bounce your opponent's level threes to their owner's hand. And you have Gao Goman. So when attacking, if your opponent has eight or more cards in hand, gain one memory. But when attacking, if, you're, if you have a tamer in play, return one of your opponent's level threes. You can control little rookies very easily. Kumamon, just because it's hybrid game shenanigans. Galgamon, the new one from EX4. When did you all return one of your opponent's level 3s to its owner's hand? When in effect adds a card to your opponent's hand, gain one memory. So, that's going to be what we do there. And then we have Mecha Gargo. The only problem I have this is all turns when in effect adds a card to your opponent's hand. Unsuspend this Digimon. It is a you have to do card, and I hate those kind of cards. But when did you all get this Digimon gains blocker and gets plus 2000 DP for every two every four cards in your opponent's hand until the end of opponent's next turn so that's going to help us get some beefy numbers and we like that and you have mecha gargo return one of your opponent's level four lowers to their own hand by digibursting two but your turn while you have a tamer play this gives it 2000 dp and we also have the new mecha gargo so when did you all return one of your opponent's level four or lowers to their owner's hand but it also if your opponent has eight or more cards in there unsuspend this digimon it's a you a mandatory skill not a you may skill and that can hurt you a lot then we have mirage galga so when did you want to return one opponent's level five or lower digimon to its own hand if no digimon is returned by this effect your opponent adds the top card of their security stack to their hand but also when an effect adds a card to your opponent's hand gain one memory for every four cards in your opponent's hand so if they have a wide big hand sometimes this can really do some punishment in itself and then z garuman is a Really interesting card tech, but when did you want to return one of your opponent's level four or lower Digimon to its owner's hand? Then, if your opponent has eight or more cards in their hand, return one of your opponent's level six or higher Digimon to their owner's hand. So, being able to manipulate when your opponent's hand size is mattering, you can get rid of big Digimon or small Digimon depending on what mega you go into. All turns when an effect adds a card to your opponent's hand. If you have a tamer in play, return one of your opponent's level three Digimon to its owner's hand. Since we're going to have that tamer shenanigans it's really good death x just for the splash of control blue memboos and kaitis breath more great powerful options nikolai is just basically guaranteeing that galmon's in their name games jamming until the end of a turn one of them at least for each one you have nikolai can just keep putting it on one of your others and then when in effect adds a card to your opponent's hand by, by suspending this tamer gain one memory send your plays davis we know about as a searcher then thomas on play, draw a card. If your opponent has eight or more cards in the hand, you may suspend this tamer to unsuspend one of your Digimon with Galmon and same. So that's important there. But I kind of get why they wanted to make sure you comboed really nicely with Thomas to restand your Mirage Galga. But we'll have to see what happens with Thomas's new Mirage Galga burst mode version. I want to see what they do with it because it probably is going to change up the deck a lot. So guys, what did you think of Japanese Tuesday? What decks would you like to see? Let me know down in the comments. Hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. You know the drill. 
helps promote the video, gets it to everybody as it can, as long as you comment, because that algorithm demands it of everybody to do so. But without further ado, hopefully you guys stay safe, stay healthy, and I'll catch you next one. Peace!